Hello, my beloveds. Welcome to the Year and Hot Mess Ministry Sermon. And it has been three months since I've been here, I've been deep into the phase of embodiment, as I'm sure all of us have, whether we are fully conscious of it or not. Um, and I just want to say to you, thank you for giving me the space to do this. And thank you to those of you that have sent me messages throughout the past few weeks of encouragement and love and just thinking of me. I truly appreciate it. Even if I wasn't in the space to respond, um, it always touched my heart and I just sent blessings your way. So thank you very much. To be honest, I don't know what this next year is going to bring. Um, all I know is that I woke up thinking, I think I have something to say today. And as I was pondering if I was actually going to say it, I got an email from someone who follows the Hot Mess Ministries. And um, she was just sending blessings and love and saying she missed me. And now this is, you know who you are. This is the second time you've sort of confirmed a wondering in my mind about the Hot Mess Ministries. So when I was thinking, hmm, should I do this? Is this a good thing to do for me? I get that confirmation. So thank you, dear sister, for that confirmation. You were divine messenger that um, this was a good thing for me to do today. Um, first off, this last day of 2018, we have to give ourselves major props for what we have done this whole year. This year, for me personally, and I know for many of you, has been such an intense, dramatic year of transformation. Um, and, and, and I'm finding that this month of December is sort of a full circle moment for me personally, as I've had to face the same debilitating fears that I had to face last December, the ones that brought me to my knees and led me to, you know, the ultimate divine surrender. This time, however, I have had, and we all have, more wisdom and the divine tools to not only handle the fears, but to dissolve them and to rewrite them. So this is where I am right now. And so that's only that's the only thing I can report on is where I am right now. And if it helps any of you, it's a guidepost or signpost, then all the better. But we do have to give ourselves props for everything that this transformative year has delivered to us. Um, for me, it was the divine mind and this, the beginning of a restoration of this body that lost 30 pounds of ascension weight um, and many ailments and discomforts. It's only the beginning, but I'm so very grateful to see the transformation that's been going on on the higher realms starting to come here in the physical. And I know many of you have started to see that as well. And more and more will. So, you know, just because 2018 is coming to an end doesn't mean that this is the end of the miracle mind or the end of miracles. It is only the beginning. And it'll begin to pick up speed, sort of like a tidal wave, okay? So... If you're not exactly where you want to be right now, and seriously, who, who of us is? We are in a perfect place to be ex perfect exactly where we are. If we can just acknowledge where I am right now is precious and perfect, and I acknowledge all that I have done and all how far I have come in this transformative year. So... Um, you know, as I said, I've been deep in the embodiment process. So what does that mean? Instead of uh, praying to God or looking to God, just becoming God, realizing everything that we have learned throughout this year, that we have the word of God as our command, the authority of God, realizing that it is within us and there is nothing without that we need to search for because it is, it is within. And, you know, if you want to look back, I took a quick look back at all the topics from the the sermons, and I mean, they're so good. They're just so good. They come from divinity, and they will never, ever, ever get old. So just because, you know, I started them back in June, and they're so much more even relevant now because they have more power behind them because we have more belief in ourselves. So you could look back at all those and get something new out of them. Um, so anyway, I just want to briefly talk about this month and um, I know it's been challenging for many. It's been very challenging for me. However, there have been such 
the past few months has been uh, such a, a bouquet of incredible blessings and bliss and godliness mixed in with the releasing and the rewriting and the facing of the darkest fears. But we have, I've had thankfully, the wisdom from everything I've learned this past year to face these fears with what I call divine neutrality. And uh, that's a topic I'm going to be talking about later in this sermon. But that is exactly where we want to be. So when I look back to where I was last year exactly, you know, was when I was brought to my knees um, in divine surrender. Uh, I can honestly say that the triggers have probably been even more intense this time around. But if you look back to the things I've talked about, like just saying, um, you know, divine denial, I love that one. Uh, and it's so important because at this phase of our lives to rewrite, rea rea rewrite reality, we have to deny the reality that is right in front of us. So when something would come up that was disastrous or um, a triggery or just plain scary, the first instinct is to react and to panic. That is the human nature. I know well enough not to do that. And even if I do it for a second, there's like this warning, like, okay, you're panicking, panicking, don't do that. Don't panic. Okay, so that's the most important thing. A trigger comes up, take a deep breath. We realize that the old limited human wants to react to it, but no, we stop. We leave the room if we have to. We take a deep breath. Um, and this, I, I tell you, D December is when I have been pulling all these divine tools in of den divine denial, the law of forgiveness. I talk about all this in the 30-day surrender. All these amazing divine tools that come straight from the God self, straight from the divine mind. This is how we write reality. And I have been forgiving, I have been denying, and I have been affirming. Um, and even if I panic for a minute, I just whew, say, this is not mine. This is not real. I surrender this over to the divine. Um, so uh, let's see. Can I give you a couple little um, examples? Uh, I'm wondering if I want to do that just yet. The examples. Um, not yet. Not yet. I will give you examples when we talk about divine neutrality. But the thing is, first, we call in the law of forgiveness if we're experiencing, and you know what, it's an old pattern. So these old patterns are coming up. They are, and they will continue to come up until we are not triggered by them anymore. So this is very important. Listen to this. So it is human nature to just want to be in the higher realms all the time, have everything go well. When, when other teachers say the end of suffering, it doesn't mean that the circumstances that make us suffer are going to change. And I talk about this in another sermon. It means that we change so we can look at these triggers and react in a different way. So uh, I think so. one of the comments said, same old shit, different me. That's exactly right. So the triggers won't go away. And I've been saying this to my hu my husband, who's been having a really challenging time of it. In fact, uh, my father-in-law died the day I did my last sermon. So it has been a whirlwind of trying to just take care of business in that way. And my husband has just been in a whirlwind trying to, you know, take care of his mother's stuff and the finances there on top of our own stuff. And it's been one more thing, and one thing after another, where he's, you know, treating everything as a crisis. At first it was a crisis, and now everything is a crisis. And he's just, I just want peace. Every time I try and relax, something else comes up, something else comes up. And I, I know that my espousing doesn't help things, so mostly I'm just quiet. But mostly, I, I know, most importantly, we have to realize that peace comes from inside, Okay, we can't look out outside circumstances to be peaceful before we are peaceful inside. We must be peaceful inside, even as the chaos is going around. So we can't look to outside circumstances to give us relaxation and peace. It will only come from within. And when we have that centering peace within us, and it becomes habitual. That is when the outside circumstances will change. But we will keep encountering our triggers until we are not triggered by them anymore. 
This is definitely true for me. Um, so what, what can we do? We can use all these divine tools. We can call the law of forgiveness for these miscreations that we're experiencing. Divine denial, so important this past month. Um, I'm either, you know, I'm either denying, forgiving, or affirming. And as I say in a past sermon, the word of God, an affirmation is a command from the God self. This is why affirmations are so important. I talk about how they rewrite the brain, but they're also a command from our God self. So, um, and now I'm going to give you an example of um, a really good affirmation. You know, when it comes to my house, which I've been talking about for a year, it'd be so easy to say, you know, okay, well, my, my affirmation is this house is ours free and clear, which frankly we have been using. But the, the highest affirmation we can use is the house, the home that is ours by divine right is provided for us in miraculous ways under the grace of God. So is this house the right house for me? I don't know. Maybe my God self has something even better in store. So don't limit your affirmation or command by what you think you should have. You ask for the home that is yours by divine right. And this is straight from Florence Scovelshin. Um, you ask for the the relationship that is yours by divine right, the life path that is yours by divine right, the prosperity that is yours by divine right. Don't dictate what it should be, but you just say, what is mine by divine right is now provided for me. Um, so that is a great way of commanding without limiting. Okay, I love that. Command without limiting, but that's why the affirmations are so important right now because it is a command. And we have to step into our confidence to do this. This is what will rewrite our reality. So if something comes up that is your biggest trigger, you're going to recognize it by the pain and constriction you get in your heart. You're going to feel it right here. You're going to feel it constricting. And you're going to feel the human wanting to react in old ways. And then you're going to feel how awful that feels to react in old ways. Okay? It's addicting because it's habitual, but it's a, it's an addiction we have to break. So what do we do? We leave the room, we take a deep breath, we panic for a moment if that's what our human needs to do. It's okay to panic for a moment if you just reel it in as quickly as you can. It's okay to panic. I had a panic moment on Christmas Eve. Um, and then I reeled it in, and when you reel it in, you realize and this is so important, and I'm going to talk about this in, in, in just a minute. But when you realize the old ways of looking at things no longer apply, you will not find solutions in the old. And that means you won't find solutions in the old way of reacting or in the old way of trying to solve things or force or make it happen. Okay? It's all an affirmation. It's all consciousness. It's all a change in energy. Um... Oh my God, there, there's so much I could say. I was wondering if I had anything to say. There's so much I could say. Um, I'm just going to take a moment and like reel myself in and see what's in, there's so much I could say. Um, okay, so for instance, when something comes up that makes us want to worry or panic or fret, we have it within us to command how it goes. So instead of wondering and worrying, oh my God, like what's going to happen next? Or, oh, what does this mean? We command what it means. And for myself, I'm commanding divine solutions and uh, the manifestation of miracles because right now those are the only things that make sense. Things that are unknown are the things that make sense right now. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll circle back around to that. But I did talk about, I've talked about this so many times with the divine mind. And this is coming in with more of my full embodiment. I am not fully embodied yet. Um, Sometimes I am though. It it comes in and out. It's like a it's like a phasing in and out. And let me tell you, just as an aside, when I am in my full embodiment, 
man, uh, it is worth everything that we have been, we, we have been to. We can feel the love from our God self sort of making everything out there in the world a love song, you know, like the dancing of the leaves or it, it's a dance just for us. And it's so yummy. Every song you hear, you're like, oh my God, this is my favorite song. Um, everything is worth a moment of celebration. There's been times I've been in the movies lately and been in a fully embodied self and I'll see someone, this moment was just so pure. I'm just going to, I'm just going to mention it. There was an older gentleman sitting in front of us and he just, you know, tipped up a box of candy and poured it in his mouth. And I was just overcome with love for this man. Like, oh my God, I love this man. So when you're fully embodied in your God self, you are, f this is, oh, this is so yummy. Maybe oh, this is so yummy. You are just so filled with love for everything and everyone. And it is just a pure gift to be here alive, experiencing this love and this bliss and this celebration. It's more than we can even imagine because our human love it doesn't even scratch the surface of this godly love that is within us. And when we can fully embody this love on a permanent basis, the world and the consciousness and humanity will change so quickly. This love that we feel when we are fully embodied, I felt it again at the movies. I don't know why I feel this at the movies, just, just this intense love for people. I felt it watching a video for someone earlier, just this intense love and this love that you're feeling for someone. I was told today as I was feeling it, this is the power to heal everything. And this is the love without agenda. When you are projecting and feeling this love, it touches everything. It touches everything. I, I don't know what the other people feel, but I know that something is happening there. When you are feeling this love for humanity or whatever, nothing goes untouched. And this is when the loving without agenda will change everything. I'm high even just thinking about it. But this is what it means to fully embody it. So there have been times many times over the past three months that I have been feeling this pure bliss embodiment. Um, and this is what it, this is what it's here for. This is when you can just love, 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 and you just celebrate and are so happy to wake up in the morning. And then this divine creativity comes and you see things that you weren't able to see before because you cleared all the stuff. We are already God and we have been working so hard to clear out all the stuff so we can remember our magnificence. So for me, these past three months have been experiencing the godliness and then having to go back in deep and release everything that isn't there. Um, and, and I do talk about this in other sermons, but when we're not feeling the love, this is when we turn the love inwards and just say, I'm doing everything right. This is important. Use this for the highest good. This will pass. And just affirm your magnificence. I am the magnificence of God. Whatever whatever feels good to you and know that you will embody it even more after those horrible phases. Sometimes there are days, sometimes there are moments, sometimes there are an hour, but this is the work, the back and forth, the back and forth, the back and forth until it is just there all the time. Okay, Whew, that was lovely for me. <laughs> Okay, I would you want to talk about divine neutrality some more because this is so important. This month, this year we're going into, it needs to be a time of really mastering our divine neutrality. So I'm going to give you some for instances of things that just have happened the past couple of days. Uh, simple things, but, um, you know, in the midst of everything else we've been experiencing, <laughs> even, you know, the simple things can kind of throw you off, but uh, okay, here's a really simple for instance. So yesterday I'm wearing this long, beautiful, like crystal necklace. It's, it's new. I bought it last month. And um, it got caught on something and it broke. And I, I love this necklace. Uh, but I knew right away not to panic or not even to react. So my necklace broke. I'm like, oh, my necklace broke. And then I remembered, okay, 
there is no loss in divine mind, Florence Grobelshin. I said, there is no brokenness in divine mind. I was in the middle of doing other things, so I took off the necklace, I put it down, and I knew I'd come back to it at a later time. Um, so I finished doing whatever I was doing. I commanded divine order, and I looked at how to fix it. And I couldn't fix it in the conventional way. But I was just looking at it, knowing that there is no loss. Um, and I was able to fix it in a way that was non-conventional, super, super simple. I didn't need any tools or everything, and it is permanently fixed. Um, and so I stayed neutral when I broke it, uh, and then I stayed neutral. I'm even neutral after I fixed it. There was a moment of, yes, wonderful, and then you move on. So divine neutrality is feeling no disappointment, but then sort of no... There's not, there's like almost little celebration because it's just, just more of a, and of course. Um, and another example is that, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Okay, this was yesterday too. Our a very expensive Viking oven that came with our house. It's like a $15,000 oven. Uh, it wouldn't turn on. It wouldn't turn on. Uh, so I tried it a few times, walked away, said a prayer. It didn't turn on. I knew not to react. Okay. Uh, my husband, <laughs> I was really not wanting to tell him, him having everything else piled on top of him. But I, of course I did tell him. Um, thankfully, after a moment of just, oh, what else? He was also able to be divinely neutral about it. At this point, it was sort of a comedy of errors after everything else we've been through this month and him the past three months. It was just like, yeah, wh whatever, something else to add. So, you know, we looked up we looked up stuff on the internet. We thought we found the answer. We just said, okay, this will be an easy fix, but we're going to have to get to it a little later. Thankfully, we have another little oven attached to this um, a Viking that did work. So we were able to use that. Uh, and then I went to use the little oven today, and that one didn't turn on. I walked away. It's a little prayer came back, and it did turn on. But I shared this with my husband. I said, you know, the little oven didn't turn on right away, but I said a prayer and it came on. But that that clicked something in him. And he said, oh, okay, well, I read about this online yesterday. And he went and looked at the fuse. And even though it didn't look like it had tripped, he just turned it back on, turned it back off. Both ovens are working. Divine neutrality. So we didn't freak out when our $15,000 oven didn't work. And there was also actually very little celebration when it came on. There was like, oh, yay, hallelujah, and a hug. But divine neutrality feels very little disappointment and very little celebration because it's more of like an of course. And there were, there's, there's many women who have done the divine mother activation this year after years of trying to have a baby, and they get pregnant and many of them said it was almost anticlimactic. You know, because you know why? Because when you're working with the divine mind, when you're working with your divine tools, it's simply just a, of course, of course. And there is freedom in that. There is absolute freedom in that. The divine solutions and the miracles do require, however, our participation. Okay, so we can't just simply sit back and say, God, do it for me. We can ask to be guided to the next step. All right, tell me what it is I am supposed to do next and let it light up and let it be clear. We have to have conscious participation, even if it is just simply our consciousness. Everything is consciousness. And I'm just going to say once again, because I'm trying to hammer this into my children, uh, uh, you know, I can see them worrying about things. And I say, no, don't worry. Worry is useless. Instead, affirm command. Uh, we had a trip scheduled last week, and it looked like it was going to snow the whole time we were supposed to be traveling. So what did we do? We had a family prayer and affirmed that the weather would cooperate. And it did. The weather changed the next day. My son's birthday is in four, five days. And he's worrying 
that it's going to rain on his birthday. He likes to go outside every day. He doesn't want it to rain. And I said, Rowan, don't worry about it. Command it instead. Um, and, you know, I give him the words, you know, like, the weather will be perfect on my birthday. This is the command. We can command this. My little one, when he's worrying about his loose teeth, is my tooth okay? Honey, what do you say? I am, my, my teeth are healthy and perfect. Instead of worrying, we affirm that is the command of God. My husband, he's freaking out about dinner. Is this cooked? Oh my God, is this, is this going to be okay? I'm, honey, honey, don't worry about it. Don't wonder about it. You affirm it. This is the most delicious meal I've ever cooked. And it is. This is where we are right now in our mastery. Okay? We don't worry. Uh... We don't wonder. We don't worry and we don't wonder. We command and we affirm. This is the word and the authority of the inner God self that we are supposed to exercise right now. This is mastery. And it takes tremendous discipline. Um, but there should really only be 10 thoughts in your head. I've said this before in many places, 10 thoughts in your head because what? There's really just 10, 10 things we're worrying about at any time. You know, it's usually our health, our wealth, our future, our finances, our relationship, whatever else, have a perfect, have an affirmation for that. Instead of worrying about your children, God has perfect expression in my children. Instead of worrying about your, your health, divine health expresses itself perfectly in me. This is what we need to do to hone our God self. Keep your eyes on the divine at all times. That is my rule right now. So what I want to finish off with is where we're going now. Um, and here, I will send out the offering plate for donations. I will accept any donations gratefully that you may want to give. And I bless them and may everything you donate come back to you multiplied. Um, and thank you very much. Going into this next year, this mastery, and you know, I, I've talked about this dream so many times that I had a year ago, going up this mountain and seeing these dark cloaked figures wanting to run back down, but knowing they would chase me. You have to walk up to these dark cloaked figures and then they take off their mask and you realize that they're friends and family and they're loved. There's nothing to fear. And that's when the superhuman abilities click in. This is the time to face these fears. We can't hide from them. We can't cower away from them. We can't repress them, suppress them. We face them and affirm that we are safe. And, and this just goes back. This is a wonderful th thing to do when you're feeling unsafe and you're wondering, am I safe? Am I safe? Affirm. This is a safe place. This is a safe place. This is where we are right now to be poised and confident in our ability to command from our God self. Okay. This is a safe place. And then we face these fears knowing that there is nothing to fear. We are always provided for. Going back to this coming year, though, this is a year of the unknown. I don't know what it looks like. All I know is that 2018 has stripped me of everything that did not resonate with the magnificence of my God self, the identity, the purpose was stripped. Um, I can't even remember everything else that was stripped, but stripped down to such a place that the only thing that will make it through this little keyhole into 2018 is the light of our magnificence. Everything else stays behind. And we don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it looks like. What, what will be my role in, in service to people? I, now that I know I'm not supposed to rescue, I'm not supposed to be the savior because that would be denying other people's divinity. Everyone has their own savior within them. It's not up to me to rescue. So what am I going to do right now? I don't know. I'm, I'm discovering that I'm interested in earthly things, you know? Things that I just want to keep close to me right now, but that are just so fun. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know where we'll be living. I don't know any of the answers. But what I do know is that we can't, I cannot look to the past. 
for what will be in the future. I cannot look to the old problems. I cannot look to the old solutions. The only thing that I know is that the solutions and the miracles, the manifestations are in the unknown. They're in the unexperienced, meaning we have never experienced this before. But when you're looking at a problem, know that there are no old solutions, okay? Uh, the new solutions will surprise us and they will happen beyond our human understanding, effort, or imaginings. They will not look like anything we're used to. Um, so we have to trust in the unknown. And that comes, that's a reflection of how much you can trust the God within yourself, how much you've stripped down, how much we're still fearful. It's okay to be fearful because that's just part of human nature. But when we affirm and command and command that safe space, then we know there's nothing to fear. That we know that in the unknown is love. In the unknown is the celebration. It's like a beautiful surprise party waiting for us. But we have to command it and we have to participate it, participate in it. And so me, I'm all about the affirmations. I'm all about the commanding um, and having just those 10 divine thoughts in my head at any given time. 10 divine thoughts in my head at any given time. Uh, and I do talk about this more in the 30 day divine surrender, if you were interested in that, but great tools to set us up for the mastery that 2019 will come, uh, will demand of us. And my, it's going to be, uh, yes, it will be messy. It will be messy. We might feel like we're in darkness, but we don't need to be afraid of the dark. People are afraid of the dark because it's unknown. They can't see. And this is what we need to do to cultivate our divinity. We, we use that shining light that was within us. Those 10 thoughts in your head are the batteries for this divine light that is you. And you are the light that shines in the darkness. And as you are the light that shines in this darkness, then you see these beautiful, beautiful, magnificent manifestations and solutions and creations that have been there the whole time. But we couldn't see them because we were in the dark. But now, we are the light. We are the light. Can you feel it, my beloveds? I'm high on it right now. <laughs> but this is where we're headed, into the unknown. And even if it's dark and chaotic, we can command the peace and the poise and the confidence. We are the light. We are the light. Things will be very different from here on out. There will still be crumbling of systems. Uh, they will eat themselves. We, they will eat themselves. But we just have to know that we are provided for every step of the way. Instead of worrying, affirm. Instead of wondering, command. Be the light in the darkness. That is what this world needs. And this is what we came here to do. This is what we came here to do. So raise your light. Shine it bright. And when you feel that overwhelming love, those moments of embodiment, then you know exactly what we've been doing it all for. And things will change very quickly. So I have been saying for the past year, 2018 is the year the miracle started. It's absolutely true. I've had some miracles in my own life, and I've seen them in others. And they will just continue to pick up speed. We haven't lost any footing. If you feel like you're in a full circle moment, it is time for you to just rewrite their reality. Command your divine truth, neutrality. It will be a trigger until you're not triggered anymore. We got this. This is what we came here to do. And I love you. I love you. I love you. How you'll see me in 2019, I don't know. But let us shine our lights together. All right? I love you.